All right, now for the dye block. Um, on this one, it's actually a little bit easier to get our two holes through here than on the punch plate because we don't have to worry about the counter bars. And we've already figured out our spacing. We just need to um, do it the opposite way on this one. The hard part on this one is getting this hole right here. And what this hole is is basically a little grip to hold the, the stock uh, when we start pushing it through. And I'll let you see how it all works out in a little bit. But the first thing we're going to do is just size these two holes and then locate them where they should go. So if I go back and I look at my other plate, I'm going to go to my punch holder. And I look here, I'm going to see that this is a one point, or right here I'm looking for the spacing, this is a point five six two five spacing off center. And this one here is a point five sixty four off of center. So I'm going to put those two numbers in. So point five six two five and point five six three five. I think they are. It's showing it rounded here. So so I go to my die block, click here, and I'm going to make this number. It's telling me it's an old version, so I'm just going to hit OK. Point five six two five. And this one is going to be, oops, the distance off here, 0.564, which it actually is. So now, that one in my case ended up being okay, but you would have to change it to what it's supposed to be. Now remember, if I look at this from the top view, that the small hole and the large hole are opposite of what the punch holder is. So if I go to the punch holder and look at this from the top, you'll see that the small hole and the large hole are on the opposite sides. So they're opposite. And that's just because that has to be because one of these is going to be flipped over the other way. So the main thing is to get these located distance off of center to be the same as the punch plate. Then for sizes you're going to actually be putting in the actual size on the large hole as what your washer is. So in my case it's a 1.0635 washer but yours may be one inch or it might be um, 0.875 so you'd put in 1.0635 uh, or whatever yours is and your small hole is then going to be your punt or your pierced out hole plus the clearance on the side. Now the clearance on the side is 3% of the material that you're going to stamp. So the material we're going to stamp is going to be a 74 thousandths material. So if I take my calculator and I do 0.074 thousandths and I take that times 0.3 gives me, eh, it's actually not 0.3, if I take 0.07 this isn't working. Alright, for the die block, what we have here is a very similar looking block. Um, but on this one, what we have is on the four holes or four corners, we have the same uh, mounting holes to mount to the platen. We then have our two die holes that we're going to put in here. One hole is for the blanking to happen. And this will be sized exactly the same size as the outside of your washer. Because the die hole here actually sizes the washer. Now the small hole, that's your piercing punch, um, or the piercing hole. That one there needs to have clearance built into it. So your piercing punch you actually made size on size. And this hole then will have clearance. So this will be larger than what your pierced hole should be. So that the piercing punch can fit into it. We have our two dowel holes here, and that will align it on this side. It aligns it to the platen. And then we have four tapped holes. These four holes here are tapped. And what those are is for the stripper plate to mount to this plate. Now, all that stuff will be, these outer holes here will all be the same on everyone's box. You don't need to modify those. It's just these three holes in the middle here that we need to modify. You need to modify the blanking hole, the piercing hole, and this little guide hole 
and that's probably the trickiest part of it but we will end up doing these two first so the things we need to do are locate distance off a of center and those should match the numbers from your punch holder so the small hole will be the same distance off as the small holder and the punch holder and the large hole same distance off as the large hole and the punch holder and then the sizes will do after that so let's first locate so here this one here is half inch off of the center and we're gonna look over on our other one and see what we really want so I'm gonna tab over to my punch holder and I'm gonna see on the large hole I want it to be 0.56 and I'm gonna click on this 0.5625 off of center and we'll just look now to start out uh, the small hole is 0.564 off of center so 564 off center for the small 5625 for the large. Alright, so the large is 0.5625, and the small then is 0.564. So that's my location for both of those. So the location's good. Now, what I want is to make sure that my sizes are right. So for the large hole, I want that to be the size of my washer, so 1.0635, I think is the size of my washer. And the small hole will then be the size of your piercing punch plus the clearance of 3% per side. And it's 3% of the thickness of material that you're going to stamp. So I'm going to tab to my punch holder again. Actually I'm going to tab to my punch and I want a 532 on mine so I want to have 532 plus the additional clearance per side. So to figure out the clearance I'm going to pull up my calculator and I, I'm going to use 0 .074 material so that's the gauge thickness of our material times 0 .003 equals and I actually did that wrong. You see I got an extra decimal place in there, so I'm going to clear that. So I want 0 0.074 times 0 0.03 equals. So I want 0 0.00222 per side. So I'm going to take this number times 2 to get per side plus the size of this diameter here. So plus 0.532 equals. So I want to have a hole through there of 0.53644. Now everyone's going to be different, nobody's going to match mine exactly, but you'll have to do that calculation. Alright, so I'm going to close up my thing here, and I'm then going to go over to my die block, and I'm going to make this hole then 0.532 plus point zero zero four 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 is what it ended up being and I get my number so the size of that hole is right it's in the right location and then this one the size is right and it's in the right location so I have those holes correct and then the last one is this hole right here and where that hole needs to be that's a little bit trickier so what I need to do is I'm gonna look at this from the top view and I'm gonna do a little sketching so I'm going to draw a circle right here, and I am then going to draw a circle right here. And if I were to take this and smart dimension it, actually, let's just do, I'm going to delete this. I'm just going to draw this one, and I'm going to smart dimension it. And this hole is going to be the size of my washer, so 1.063. Now what I can do is I can take this and I can copy it over two times my advance. So my advance once would be to here, my advance again to, would be over to here somewhere. So I'm going to go in here to move entities and I'm going to copy entities. And I had this arc picked already, but if I didn't I would just choose it. And I go X, Y. So in the X I want to go my washer size, so 1.063 plus point plus point oh six 
3 for my scrap bridge. And you'll see that I move that way. I want it to go the opposite way, so I'm going to type in negative. And we had figured this number out in the um, punch holder, but it was negative 1.126. And I hit enter. So you'll see how it moved it once to here, and I want to do this twice. So I'm going to say repeat, and it should have moved it twice, but obviously it didn't. So I'm going to have to do this again. So negative 1.126. And I hit OK. So that is where it would be moved once. Now we already had known that um, for this one. So I'm going to take this one I just did and I'm going to copy that one as well. So I'm going to copy entities, negative 1.126, enter, and it puts it here. And I hit OK. So now what I basically have is this here is where the washer would be when I pierce the center out. You'll see right here, it pierced the center out. Then this would advance over to here, and it would blank it out. And I would just have a big hole through my strip that I'd be running through the, the part, or through the die. That would advance again, and then this hole would be over here somewhere. So it would end up being right here, and this would be a through hole, and then I'd have material here. But what this hole right here is for is that there'll be a little dowel pin here that's grounded at an angle that sticks up just a little bit. And what that sticks up is that when I'm feeding this through, this the first time it feeds through, this hole right here will grip onto that to kind of hold it in there for the first few punches. So what we want is for this circle to be the edge of it here tangent to the edge of it here so that it holds it in there. So I really need to figure out what the distance is from the quadrant here to there. So what I'm going to do is create a line from the quadrant here to right there. So I just got a line right there, and now I can analyze that. So if I smart dimension what this line is, you'll see that I'm getting 0.0615. So I want to move this hole over that where it is right now to the right, 0.0615. Plus I probably want to go like a half thousandths to a thousandths of clearance in there. So if I went over 0.0625, I would be fine. So I'm going to close that out. Now this, these holes, or these, this sketch here was just for reference. I'm going to leave it, though, because I want to see what's going on after I move it. So I'm going to accept this sketch, so those should turn gray. And then I'm going to take this hole here, and this number here, this 2.156, I'm just going to modify that. I know I want to move it 62 thousandths. So I'm going to double click this and I'm going to say minus after it 0 0.0625 and hit enter. So I change that number and then I hit rebuild. Now I'll see that this hole moved over. So I'm going to look at it from that view. Moved over 62 thousandths. And now where this washer would be in the advance, it's going to be right tangent to the edge. So that's where we want this hole. It's probably the hardest part of getting this die block laid out. But if you think of it as you have a washer here, and this is just going to be a solid strip of material, it's going to punch this hole through. This won't be cut through at all. This is just for reference so you can see it. So after it punches this hole through, it's going to move over to here, and then it's going to blank it out. And then it's going to advance again and then where this blanked out hole is, it's going to hook onto this little edge of this dowel pin that's going to stick up. So hopefully that kind of explains it to you a little bit. That's where everything will go. And after you get this drawn to where everything needs to be, you'll save it. Um, you really wouldn't need to save it as an XT because we're going to pull it into Mastercam. But then you're going to want to update the print as well. So you'd also want to pull up the print after you save it and edit the title block to what you want and make sure you're making copies of these for your portfolio. So that's the end of this little um, demo and good luck.